Uh, so within PIMCore, we have two types of translations. One of them are shared translations and one of them are admin translations. When it comes to admin translations, these are the translations regarding the admin interface. The shared translations are actually the ones that you would typically use on the front end. And I'm going to show you, show you both. Let's use the test object that we have created. And what if, for example, we wanted to change the translation for this test input? A use case here would be if the PIMCore administration is used by multiple people that speak different languages. So let's test this out to add or change the translation for this field. We would go here to settings and down to admin translations. At first, you might see that there are a lot of a lot of languages in which you can translate what you need. But in this case, we're going to choose two languages. You can go here and press control and click on DE and control and click on EN. Now this is a, a lot more readable. So let's type in test input. Here we can see that we already have the key created. This is because the label for this input is called test input. If you're already going to add admin translations and you know that there are going to be multiple language speaking users, I would highly suggest that when you're creating a certain class, let's say this test, that you don't necessarily type the label name as such. I would advise that you maybe name it something like test, so the name of the object, and then test input. So that when you go to the admin translations, uh, this will be used as the key. Okay, let me just um, put it back, close the, close the classes, and now let's test this out. So if I go here and I type in test input, EN and on the other side for the German language uh, test input DE update it. Uh, one thing that I will need to do probably is uh, yeah I'm going to have to reload the whole administration uh, for this to to show up and now we can see that we have our test input EN. The reason for it being in the English language is because if we go here to my profile, we can see that for my user, the default language is set to English. You can set it to German, and if you set it to German and refresh the whole administration, it would show up in, in our German translation. So that's basically how you would use uh, the admin uh, translations. Here, if we go to Tools, Translations, and Translations, these are going to be our shared translations. Here you can see that you can actually switch to the admin translations and, and back. So that's a useful thing, useful thing to know. Here again, you have the option to, to change which translations will be visible, visible to you. There are a couple of ways in which you can show translations and use the translations uh, within your controller and you can also use them directly within your Twig template. I'm going to show both examples. Now, if you opened up the shared translations documentation from PIMCore, you actually have a few examples on how to, how to use it. So let's test it out on our test page that we have. Let's go back to the code. And if you saw within the documentation, we can use the translations as follows within the Twig template. If we type in, let's say, testing translations, and let's write in the name of the page actually. 
this is sort of the syntax that you would use. There's no typical or should I say standard when it comes to calling the, the keys of certain translations. Really depends on what you think is best. I like to put in the name of the page. Maybe, for example, a certain segment of the page. In this case, maybe a content dot and then the name of the translation. Also, one thing that we need to do here is write in pipe and trans. Now, if we go back to our page, it's not actually going to be translated immediately, of course. But a cool thing that will happen now, if we type in test.content, we can see that the key is automatically created. If a certain translation does not exist yet, PIMCore will actually create and create a key within the database within the translations where you can go and translate it all. So basically you could in theory create the whole site, a whole page, just add the keys and then manually add the translations for that particular key. In this case, I'm going to type in test here for, well, test translation en. And that's basically it. What we need to do here, if we go back and refresh the page, we will see that our test translation EN is now available. If we were to create a page on the German uh, site, we would not get a translation back because we didn't put in the translation here. But if we did put a translation, of course, it would be translated. To know in which language the translation will be translated at, you would have to go to your document, go to navigation properties, and here you actually set the language in which this document is supposed to be. Now let's see an example when using a controller. So if we wanted something uh, translated on the back end, we could simply either create a constructor and dependency inject the translator interface, or we can add it here within the parameters for uh, the action in which we want to use it. So if we st start typing translator uh, interface, we can see that we have the symphony component translator interface. As you can see, let me just double check this uh, within the documentation. We're supposed to use the contracts translation. Okay interface, go back, go ahead, pick that one, and just call it translator. Now, if we wanted to translate something, for example, translation test equals this, oh, sorry, translator, uh, trans, now, we just need to pass the key to the translation, which is going to be test.content.testTranslation. Of course, if we wanted to use it on the front end, we would need to pass it as an additional parameter. Uh, use case for translations within the back end would be to show maybe certain certain errors. So let's see, test translation equals this, okay. Let's go back to our Twig template and just under this, we can write out the variable test translation. Is that what we call it? Did. Okay, and go back to our front end, refresh the page. Okay, we can see that I actually wrote in the wrong, the wrong key. So let's change it back. 
and refresh the page and now we can see that the translation is working. A couple of cool things that we have here as well is cleaning up certain certain translations. Uh, here you can see that it didn't clean up anything. It cleans up only the translations which are not used. Well, not used in a sense where none of these columns are actually filled in with the translations. Uh, we can export all of the translations. For, so for example, if locally you added all of the translations, you can import them via this tool to your live site. Also, when you're importing, you have the option of merging translations. If, for example, I added locally a translation for the English language for this key and someone added it over there as well, you have an option of merging the translations which you actually need to merge. It will show you basically conflicts which you have when merging. If you wanted to, for example, add a new translation manually, you could just click here, type in the key, and then you can add the translation if needed. But this is not normally used. Maybe a use case where you would need to uh, set it manually is, as I said, on the back end, you can use it for showing errors in different languages. So it would be easier for you to add it manually here than uh, triggering the actual error in the back end so that the key gets added here to the list of the translations. Hope the video helped you. And if you want to learn more about PIMCore, you can check out my Udemy course called Learning PIMCore from Zero to Hero, where I will show you all of the steps from creating a project, buying and setting up a server, as well as deploying your project. Hope to see you there.